Hey everybody, John DiPietro here. I'm visiting with John Spottiswood, who has taken some of our digital activism classes. And uh, John is, is a local activist here who has some pretty interesting stories to tell um, of, of ways that he's gotten involved in his community and some, uh, some ordinances that, that he's organized people to push back against. So um, John, thanks for joining me tonight. Uh, appreciate you taking the time. And uh, you wanna just go ahead and introduce yourself real quick and uh, you know, give us some background, let us know what the, uh, what the story is behind uh, some of these uh, activities that you've organized. Sure, uh, John Spot is what we, we, uh, me and my wife, Laura, live in Pelham, New Hampshire. Uh, we've lived here about 20 years um, in the town of Pelham. And probably, well, it was two years ago now, someone, uh, we had a little issue in Pelham. You know, obviously we're a community that's growing. You know, it used to be a, a complete agricultural com uh, community, getting a little overbuilt now. So there's some conflicts. And uh, we had some, some neighbors that they couldn't get along with, uh, you know, that, that some enjoyed li the livestock life and some didn't. And that resulted in uh, someone creating a citizen's petition to ban any livestock on less than three acres, which in New Hampshire can include bees, rabbits, uh, goats, everything, uh, with, with the exception of, of poultry. So you could still have chickens, um, which we thought was interesting because chickens are livestock as well. So anyways, we got wind of it uh, right before the, the, the election where it passed. And we, we tried to do a little work on it. And, and you know how town politics go, you know, people don't pay attention. No one thought it would ever pass. And of course it did. And so we had a year to work on it. Um, and our goal was to put in a citizen's petition to repeal that livestock ban completely, uh, not change it to one acre, just get rid of it completely. And um, so in our town, we don't have any newspapers. There's no local newspapers at all. So we knew we, knew we were kind of up against it that way um, as far as reaching the people and trying to get the word out. So obviously we knew social media was probably better than the newspaper anyways. And uh, so that was that was our that was our key our key tool in the very beginning. And um, so what we what we used we created a Facebook page, uh, Restore Pelham Property Rights. And the goal was to to do as much recruiting right out of the gate as possible, because we knew you know how it works. As soon as something passes, you know this was an ordinance, you know a zoning ordinance. So once it passes, everybody gets word of it, and everybody realized, oh boy, that's horrible. So we knew we, we knew we had some angry people out there and our, our goal was to recruit as many of them as possible. And that's where Facebook came in. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we got the, we got the group together and our first uh, call to action was to um, get people down to town hall conveniently at a selectman's meeting, like the very first selectman's meeting we organized and, and tried to get as many people down to the sign a petition you know, you need 25 signatures to get it back on the ballot. Um, but we, we thought if we could get a good, if we could good, get a good crowd down there, we could kind of send a statement at the same time to the mm -hmm. selectmen that we were paying attention. So that first night, we probably had about, I'd say 50 or 60 people show up, which was perfect. So we, we knew right then and there, we had, we had some reach, you know, we knew we could get to the people. Uh, we knew we, we had a good group to start with. And we just kept doing that week after week after week. And um, where the social media came in for us was we had to, um, we had to keep getting the information out and we had to, we had to get the, 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 the narrative out there that this wasn't a livestock issue that you think of. It wasn't about cattle and stuff like that. This was about people's pets. So that's where, that's where the, the key was on social media for us because we could we could reach every individual person without having to go door to door um, so that that was probably the first the first big success we had was we, we re, you know recruiting all those people right out of the gate um, some other Just, uh, I, 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 I want to pause there for a second because you said something that was really important a couple of things really and um, you, you use the word framing Right. So that's something that, you know, we talk about in the training that's super important. 
um, framing the issue in a way that personalizes it for people, right? So you, you mentioned there sort of how you did it by saying, look, this isn't livestock. We're not talking about cattle. We're talking about your pets, right? We're talking about your pet rabbits. So um, making that message personal, making it emotional, and, and framing it in a way that causes people to, to want to take action. And that's, I, we found that to be probably one of our strongest uh, tools to reach even people that didn't care about livestock so much. Because a lot of people went into it thinking this, the big issue was, um, well, one conflict was some people had pigs and then some of the neighbors didn't like the smell of them. And they did a pretty good job in the beginning of, of kind of scaring people in town that everybody was going to become a pig farmer and, and you could be next. <laughs> uh, and it, and it, I'll give them credit. They did a good job because it convinced a lot of people. Yeah. So we, we flipped that narrative and said, well, this isn't nothing to do with pigs. Pigs are really hard to take care of. Um, but this is also going to restrict people and possibly take away people's pets, go pet goats. You have 4-H kids. And, you know, we played on the heartstrings as well. You know, we have kids that are in 4-H that you only have two years to show a goat. And if they can, and then you have to get a new goat. So all these kids are going to lose their 4-H experiences. So, and so we, we took the narrative and we turned it into pets rather than livestock because they kept saying livestock and that's, you know, that's kind of a heartless word. No one cares. So we, we kind of flipped that narrative and, and changed it to, to people's pets because people have rabbits for pets and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So that, that was a very powerful tool for us because that, that brought in a lot of people um, and a lot of people that just had dogs and cats because pets are pets. So we definitely, we controlled pr pretty much right out of the gate. We flipped the narrative and controlled the narrative about, um, about, about the difference between livestock and pets. And I, I think, I think we, we want a lot of hearts and minds with that one. Yeah. Because it was great. a popular message. So uh, what, what sort of things did you do tactically? Did you guys run any ads at yeah, any in point? The, in the beginning, um, I promoted the page a couple times just to float it out there. Mm -hmm. And I, and I did, I think I ran two ads in the very beginning. Once we got some information going and we had some facts about what we were doing, what we needed to do. I think I ran a couple ads. One, I just ran with the basic stuff. Like this is what we need to do to, to get, to put this petition back on the ballot. And I, and I, I, I think I targeted obviously livestock, uh, people, farmers, animal, animal groups like that. And, and it was pretty good. We probably gained, I'd say probably a hundred. I think I, I spent $10 and I ran it for a couple of days. And I think I, we gained probably a hundred people. And then, then I, I, actually we, we thought about it and we were flipping through some stuff and we kept seeing pictures of animals like cute goats and stuff like that. We're like, wait a minute, you know, we, we learned, you know, it, it, images sell, you know. So, so then we tried the same ad with a picture of a goat, a cute little goat. And I think I sponsored that ad. And, and I did the same thing, but I kind of broadened the thing a little bit to um, animal rights and stuff like that. Oh, my God. I think it probably <laughs> brought in another 300 people in a matter of a couple of days. And it was all because of the, the cute picture. People saw the picture of the cute goat instantly got their attention. But then at least we got them to read the information from there. So that, yeah. that, was, that was a pretty effective tool like, that we learned. That's great. And one of the other interesting things that, that you did and, and what I think is, uh, you know, kind of a fun part of the story is you used your, your online, you know, sort of your, your virtual presence to link people to uh, real action, like, you know, in-person um, action. Do you want to talk about, you know, what, what you were able to do there? Yep. So... One, one idea we had, we knew we had to kind of humanize the animals, which I, I think we did a pretty good job, but we really wanted to drive that home that these were people's pets. These were your neighbor's pets. Um, these, were the, these were the animals you drive, you see as you're driving on a road, and people take really good care of them, and they really love them, and they're, not, they're probably not going to eat them. So we organized a, uh, a meet and greet. This was kind of our um, street theater event. So we gathered up a bunch of people that had joined the group and asked people, to bring, you know, to bring their animals to this location. And, and we were going to, you know, set up some pens and stuff like that and have like a little petting zoo. Um, 
So we organized that. Of course, we put that on Facebook, which was tremendous. And I, I think that was probably where we flipped the town. Um, yeah. We put it out on the social media and it was just, it was like any other event. It was great. You know, we, everybody shared it and it was animals and, and uh, you know, kids wanted to come see it and stuff like that. Um, and of course, at the same time, we had petitions for people to sign, you know, sign the petition, come down and meet the animals. And, and then we, this, we did it as well with like, at the, we had dump days where we went down to the, to the transfer station and we'd advertise that we were going to be there for a sign wave and come by and stop and sign our petition. And we just, you know, weekend after weekend, we just kept collecting more and more signatures. And it wasn't so much collecting the signatures for the ballot. We already had that. This was about contact information. Right. So everybody that would sign a petition, we knew who they were. And we knew, we, you know, the week before the election, we, we, we could go back and call them to make sure they were going to show up. But uh, the online uh, or the, the social media was great. It just, it gave people a, a way to contact us and get involved. And it also gave us the outreach that we needed to get them on board. Yeah. And how did it turn out? Well, <laughs> one thing I'll say on a, on a zoning petition, something like that, no matter what, it was going to go on the ballot because it was a citizen petition, but we still had to have two public hearings with the planning. board. So we thought, you know, we knew we were going to do pretty good. And, um, but we wanted to make sure we made a statement. So the first planning board meeting, that was our other, that was another call of action we did. We said, hey, you know, we, we, have, we have a good shot here of swaying the planning board, but you got to show up. And so, we you know, we put that out there and we probably, the first planning board meeting, we probably put more people in town hall in one night than have been in that room in two years for planning board meetings. Mm -hmm. And so we, we made a pretty good statement, but believe it or not, the planning board dug their heels in and they weren't, they weren't given an inch. So that was the other part of social media that we learned that you can be pretty effective with some scare tactics as well. So as soon as that was over, we put a, I put out a post saying, well, kind of clear that the planning board, your elect officials don't really care about your property rights because that's what this was about or your animals. <laughs> and I said, well, maybe it's time we all make some phone calls to these people and ask them, you know, directly, where do you stand on property rights? And the ones who aren't going to support us, let them know you're not going to vote for them. And at the same time, let's find some people to run against them. <clears throat> um, so two weeks later at the second planning board meeting, um, they pretty much surrendered after that. So I think that was a huge impact. We, we let them know that we weren't messing around. Yeah. Of course, they received uh, hundreds of phone calls. And uh, so from there, we got the planning board approval. You know, we went to uh, election day and we went from a 250 vote loss to a 1400 vote win. Wow. Wow. Yep. That's incredible. That, that's a great story. So um, what were, were there any specific uh, takeaways or lessons from the digital activism training that helped you along the way yep. to, to make this happen? I would say from what I remember and what I learned was it was one thing to put it out there. Like we had a whole year to go from election to election. So my biggest thought was we're gonna get people riled up, but we don't wanna lose them halfway through. So I remember like talking about like very strategic messaging. So we, we kind of had a plan of like every, not every day, cause we didn't wanna overdo it, but not once a month either. So like every, every week or so we'd put out some key information. So it was enough to keep the people interest but we also didn't, you know, it's, it's zoning information and it's voting and people get really bored. Yeah. So we try to find ways of, of breaking up the monotony of it. So we, we post fun facts in between and we'd ask people to, um, you know, like on the social media thing with, Hey, like, you know, post the pictures of your animals so we can get familiar with them. So I, at least from what I remember is, you know, we, we, I think we did a good job of keeping people interested in the page and keeping their attention. And, and, you know, in, in the visual part of it as well, I think we, we did good. Like we went through and we made a, a whole, ba like a whole base of cute animal pictures. So every post we put out, we made sure that the first thing they saw was that cute animal to get their attention. And then, then you know, try to give them some good information on, on top of that. And we did it, like the, about uh, two weeks before the, the election, we did some more uh, targeted ads about, you know, we really need your support. We really need you to get to the polls. This is super important. And I think I ran probably four paid ads 
didn't spend a lot of money. I probably only spent $30 total, but I, I broadened the reach. And I remember that, like, you know, you know, it's not always, you know, we already had our core group, but we needed the other voters in town. We needed yep. the, the general voters that were just going there that might skip the vote because they don't know what it is. So I, in a, we, uh, I'd, I'd say the $30 we spent was probably the best money we spent because the numbers that we put up on election day were incredible. Yeah, but that, that, that's fantastic. Just goes to show, you know, what you can do with, uh, with a plan and following through on it and, uh, being determined. So that's a great story. So, um, like who, who would you recommend take the digital activism training? Okay. Well, I'll start with, if we didn't take it, we, we, I, we would have never had any success with it because I probably would have got frustrated because it wouldn't have been the response. So anybody, first, if, if you don't, if you really don't know how to do social media other than posting pictures with your friends, if you have any desire to, to make an impact or to be a, effective, take it. Because it's going to teach you, you're going to be on social media, you're going to learn how to use it effectively. And your time is valuable. And if you're just on there throwing things out there, I think people get bored with that. You, you, you know, people's, the other people's time is just as valuable. So you got to give them something and you're going to learn what to put on there so people pay attention and, and stay tuned and, and follow, follow what you're trying to, you know, give them. Um, and of course, if anybody is out there that has any town issues, any articles that they want to get passed, I mean, one of the first things we did, and I remember the social media that came from the other side that who put the original petition in was absolutely horrible. So I knew going into it, I had, I had a complete advantage. They were never going to be able to compete with what we were going to do. So I already had the confidence going in saying, all right, now I got a year and there's no way they're going to beat me on the social media front because I've learned what to do and what not to do and not to waste money. You know, it doesn't do you any good to throw a bunch of ads out there and spend money if you're not even targeting the right people. Right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if, if anybody's out there trying to take on a social issue or a town issue, you know, get on the class and, and just for, for a small amount of time, you're going to save yourself a ton of work and, and you're, you're going to, you're going to gain more people than you, than the, the gain the people that you need. Yeah. Those great points. And uh, so Thanks very much for taking the time tonight to, to talk to me. I appreciate it. Congratulations on, um, you know, getting your, uh, getting your ordinance repealed and uh, great job applying the training. And um, thanks again. You're welcome. Thanks for the training. <laughs> Anytime. All right, John. Take care.